What is up, my ninjas? I'm striding, and today we are taking a look at a uh, vehicle I've had since last year. I want to say September. Got this one ODC. That's me came to visit, and we went to the uh, collector uh, toy expo. And uh, yeah, this is the Sentinel One True Heroes True Hawk. Pretty much, this is their answer to the Sky Striker. I think they knew that Hasbro hadn't done an update, so they figured they would jump in and uh, give us something. So, I really like this, and I'm going to explain to you why I really like it, and why I have this, and I sold my Sky Striker. So, this thing is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's large, but it's not overdone. To me, the modern Sky Striker was a huge hunk of plastic that, for the money, it didn't do all the things that it should have done, which were things that the 1983-84 version did. On top of that, there are little play features that make it easy for you to play with this thing. I know a lot of Joe collectors like to just have the stuff and don't play with the stuff. Me, my sons, and I, we play with this stuff. I taught them to play with their stuff. I think they're toys. By definition, they were created for you to play with them, and it's not all about how accurate they are to the real deal. You want the real deal? We have things like you know model kits and the super expensive BBI, uh, you know, Soldier Force. I think is what they're called, Soldier Force or Elite Force uh, ships and whatnot with the nice paint and the you know everything. But they're fragile because they're models. But this thing here, it's a lot of play features. Stuff like the missiles being on a rail system, the bombs clipping in, and you know they actually hold tight, unlike most of Hasbro stuff. Uh, simple things like wings that uh, you know they're uh, articulated; they can sweep forward and then move back uh, without any gimmicks. You could do one at a time if you needed to show that one malfunctioned or something like that. Um, cockpit styling that is you know really really close to the real deal with obvious toyetic pieces to it so you don't have to feel like it's too realistic you know what i mean i don't know i'm one of those people who i don't mind when a toy looks like a toy uh you know your, your rear uh fins don't look bad at all thrusters in the right place and they're visible and the venting is is actually there uh everything is where it should be you know the underbelly is, is really well uh, designed, well sculpted, you know, landing gear and everything. There's a few areas that are toyetic, as you can see that big cavity. There's a reason for that, and I will get to that shortly. But, you know, as I said, landing gear is in the right place. The uh, overall underside looks right. I like that the landing gear can, you know, uh, fold away manually. There's no weird, you know, system where you push a lever and blah, blah, blah. No, because all that stuff, when it breaks, it complicates fixing that figure, that vehicle. You know what I mean? So here, each piece works independently, and it's very simple. It's just a hinge. But you have, what you end up with overall is just a beautiful plane that looks, you know, kind of futuristic, kind of uh, modern. It, it's whatever you need it to be, essentially. But the big thing for me, why I sold my Sky Striker, or I think I traded it, actually, and I ended up buying this thing. This thing, and I don't even use this one for the Joes because I found a better substitute. But this thing, the, the wings can fold away. They fold back while the uh, you know landing gear is out. The way that you know many planes with this ability, park on a aircraft carrier and a Harrier, I mean, a, a hangar, goodness. Um, and there was no reason why the new version couldn't have this. And I mentioned this when I did my review of the M0 Flashhawk from uh, Lennard. It, it's a must. It's something that should have been on the Sky Striker because you saw it in the show when it came to uh, them being on the flag. Now with mine, I made this a joint, you know, Cobra and Mars product. I uh, 
I don't know, I was, I was kind of like, I got enough planes for my Joes right now. There's probably one or two other planes I want to get for them, but I figured this will be something that, you know, Mars Industries designed for Cobra so that I can have, you know, a larger, um, fast plane for Cobra that's not a bomber of some sort or a stealth plane. This does come with a pilot, of course. It's True Heroes. It's it's Chap May. You know, they make the whole package, but they were inspired by what G.I. Joe used to do, what G.I. Joe pioneered. Uh, he fits in there properly. It looks like there's not enough clearance, but you can close the um, canopy, and uh, he fits perfectly underneath that uh, glass. There's no issues there. The seat... The seat's removable because the seat is part of a gimmick. I mean, you already know what it is because I removed it. But uh, I'll get to that in detail just a little bit later. Uh, but seat looks like a seat. You even see the straps molded in there. Nice details, you know? The figure. The figure is articulated for the most part. It's that five points of articulation uh, plus, I want to say, because the elbows and the knees bend. Uh, and... Uh, it's, it's pretty nicely done. He looks like a freaking pilot, which is nice. Uh, helmet comes off. He's just a nondescript bald guy. Part of me even <laughs> likes this look. And uh, I kind of was like thinking to myself, you know, you could use him for other stuff. I'm just like, man, he's a faceless, you know, generic bald dude. I shouldn't say faceless, but he's just kind of generic. There's nothing really distinct about him. So if you want to put a big old scar on his face or you know, sculpt a patch or, or something, you got so much room to work. The detailing on his clothing is pretty nice. I mean, he's sculpted in, or, or cast in gray, and then everything else is painted onto him. I don't have any issues with that. I was just, not, I was happy that his helmet came off. I thought that was a good, a good touch. And the details and the paint that's there, the little bit of paint, actually is present on his back. Kudos to them for that. There's a lot of other companies that don't even do that. So, you know, this is a quality package right here. Now, one could say that the pilot is an accessory to the plane. Well, the accessory to the pilot is this backpack parachute deal. So you have a parachute, you know, a paratrooper with a working parachute. Now, the bummer is that it doesn't work with the uh, plane which makes you kind of wonder, but I guess if you're one of those people who just takes these guys out immediately and puts a Joe or Cobra in, then here you have a paratrooper for whatever you want to use him for. You know, I always use these guys uh, as the regular military. <laughs> so they, they just, you know, because they, they're so nondescript, you know what I'm saying? So the Joes and, and, and the core are like kind of the special guys. Now, the underside, you saw that big cavity with buttons and a locking mechanism and all that. Uh, you can see where the batteries go. That cavity is for a handle. It's a removable handle, which I love the handles. I don't know why they didn't just have it fold up in there. I, I was kind of hoping that they would do that, but they didn't. Instead, it just uh, it's removable. It sits in there. You lock it in place with the red button that you saw in the previous picture. And uh, once in the lock position, it's not going to come out. You're going to be able to hold that thing and do all kinds of cool shit with it. And I really enjoy this part of the figure. I love handles on my planes. It just brings me back to being a little kid. Also, there's a little trigger there. And the trigger will activate lights and sounds you don't need them i never need them because i'm good enough to i got enough imagination to do all that myself but man it just adds to the feeling of being a big ass kid playing in your man cave not a care in the world really i mean you know you got to go to work whatever you got to go to work but i mean it just man it made me feel like a little kid again As I mentioned before, 
there are lights and sounds. There's a little laser on the front, like a like a pinpoint uh, uh, laser pointer type deal. You just squeeze the trigger when connected. There's a little dial on the underside of the nose of the plane, and that changes a little kind of cheesy detail that you have with the light on the front, the nose, the very tip of the nose. There are two graphics. One is a uh, targeting uh, crosshair type deal, and uh, you know it lights up pretty well, and it, it actually shows up clearly from a good distance. The other one is kind of stupid in my opinion. It's a little explosion that's in a circle, which kind of is just meh. But uh, the, the big thing is the uh, major gimmick, which deals with the big red button on the back of the plane behind the canopy. So I wanted to compare it to the uh, Storm Eagle. It's my kind of my go-to standard Joe plane. It's fun to play with. It's lightweight, but it's not too big. That's the thing. It's still pretty decent scale-wise, and I think it works well next to the uh, True Hawk. It doesn't look doesn't look bad in my opinion. Next we have the uh, Rise of Cobra Night Raven. It's kind of a modern version of the Night Raven. Uh, then this Night Raven is a little bit more compact compared to what the previous one was because it's the, the SR-71 spy plane is a long plane, but um, you still can see that the Night Raven is a little bit longer. So, you know, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, you can tell the, the, what the functions are of these two jets. Granted, I almost feel like the Night Raven should be longer, but, uh, you know, given what we have, you can see what the uh, size difference is. Now, I'm answering the question, does a modern Joe fit in it? <laughs> you already know, I wouldn't get it unless I could fit modern guys in there. Um, the ejection seat, everything works the same. There's actually more room because Joes are more slender. and The cockpit closes with no problem. You don't have to worry about trying to shave things down, cut things out, or any of that kind of shit. It works exactly the way it's supposed to work, and I love it. Now for the bottom line. You know I love this part. It's simple. If you're looking for a plane that does all the same things the Sky Striker does, it's colored in a way that it can be used for either Joe or Cobra. It comes with a figure. If you just need extra figures to be fodder or something, this is where you need to go. Also, it's under a hundred bucks. You know what I mean? Under eighty bucks. Under fifty bucks. And it does everything that the original one did and more. The only problem is that the parachute does not work inside of the, you know, with the, the pilot inside the cockpit. But, you know, for 40 bucks or less, this is a hell of a value. It makes no sense for you not to have this in your collection. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. You know how I do. So, this has been a look at the S1 Sentinel-1 True Hawk by Chap May sold under the Sentinel-1 logo. You can find these in Toys R Us. Like I said before, they go for about 40 bucks or less. And uh, that's pretty much it. It's quality stuff, fun stuff. If you enjoy playing with planes and flying them around your house, this is what you need. So that's it for me. You guys have been great. I'll see you on the next video. Peace out, Sarah.